Hi, everyone. I'm Manu Kakopian, and I am joined by UFC President Dana White, who's in the midst of producing one of the most anticipated trilogies in UFC history when Conor McGregor fights Dustin Poirier just months after the Irishman suffered a second round TKO in January. The UFC 264 main event will unfold Saturday, July 10 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas and live on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Dana, is it like Christmas for you all over again every time Connor fights? Yeah, you know, it, it's fun. It, it's not only that, but to be back in Vegas, you know, at the sold-out T-Mobile Arena and have all the fans back, Connor back, and Connor back with Poirier. It's a great trilogy. Um, you know, trilogies like this really sell. So people, people, there's so much at stake. People love these type of fights. Yeah, and we know how much trilogies have done for, for the UFC in years past. Of course, with Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture, that was really a monumental time for you and the company. Uh, and you've been a part of a, a, a lot of these Conor McGregor fight weeks and experiences so far. How would you compare this one uh, to the previous ones? Well, th this one's going to be crazy. Obviously, everybody's back in Vegas again. T-Mobile sold out. Um, uh, the country guy. Why do I keep Garth forgetting? Brooks. Uh, Garth Brooks sold out Raider Stadium. Chappelle and Rogan are sold out at, at, at MGM Grand uh, Thursday and Friday night. Justin Bieber's playing at, at the win. Drake is playing. So, I mean, I could go on for an hour with all the people that are playing all over town. So Vegas is going to be popping. Yeah, it's definitely clear uh, uh, we're in a new stage, a new wave uh, post-pandemic. And, and I think we're also in a new place in Connor's life, too, where he's a little bit more subdued lately. And I think surely the losses have probably played a part in him toning down the histrionics. How would you describe the most recent dealings with Connor and what kind of a headspace have you found him to be in since the Poirier loss? I, I find him extremely focused extremely serious about this fight um you know his family isn't coming in for this fight he, he's been turning down lots of uh you know media and other things to do but, you know this kid's a competitor man there's two things Con connor loves he loves to fight he loves to compete and he loves money so you know if he gets another win it puts him in title contention and you know he, he has the chance to possibly become a world champion again and uh, I think he's very focused on that. You know, obviously, anytime Connor fights, he takes the center of the attention. He takes a lot of uh, the limelight away from no matter who he's fighting. And Poirier is, is actually considered a slight betting favorite, despite the fact that he dismantled Connor in the rematch. Do you feel that Dustin is still being overlooked and not getting the credit he deserves? Yeah, it's true. Connor does take take a lot of the uh, the, the limelight, um, not not just from his opponents, but the co-main event is awesome. And, and you know, people aren't talking about that as much as they should be. But the reason that I don't think, if you look at how successful this fight is, um, part of that success is because of Dustin Poirier. Uh, you know, we're going into a, a badass trilogy between two really good fighters, and uh, you know. People want to see this because they know, you know, like you said, Dustin is, is, is a slight favorite and a lot of people believe that Dustin can beat him, which makes the fight that much more fun. So while Dustin might not get the as much verbal credit for the fight as Connor does, he, he's absolutely positively one of the stars of the show um, because of how successful this event is. You know, uh, Connor's brand also seems impregnable, you know, even after the loss, he still sold his whiskey brand for $600 million. Do you think he still has that hunger and desire to be an elite fighter despite the millions that just keep rolling in? Yeah, that's the problem. The problem is once you make that kind of money, I mean, this, this kid's doing things that the 1% are doing, you know, um, and, and, and he has that kind of money. And it's hard to stay focused, mean, nasty, all the things you need to be to, to, to get back to where he was is tough to do when you have that kind of money. And I think that's part of the, the narrative of this fight is will that Conor McGregor be back? And Dana, you, you're, you're a fan of the fight game, you know, before you even came into the UFC and, you know, you saw the ascent of Mike Tyson and the command that he drew. 
Um, is would you consider McGregor the modern day Mike Tyson as far as how he moves the needle? Listen, you put him up there. When, when, when you talk of this piece that I just did yesterday on social media, talks about what Conor McGregor means to Las Vegas. And it's not just us talking about the economic impact. It's some of the big, the big guys here in town from, you know, casino owners to hosts to, uh, you know, the guys that make the gambling lines, the list goes on and on. And Conor is one of the, one of the biggest stars of all time in Las Vegas history. Um, up there with the Tysons and De La Hoya's, uh, you know, and Mayweather. Now, all that said, he only has one win in the last four years. How much longer can he realistically be this kind of a draw if the wins don't translate in the cage? Good question. That's what remains to be seen. Um, you know, that's why this weekend's a, a, a big deal. It's a big fight for everybody. And, and the way that Connor is acting and the, the seriousness of this, you know that Connor believes that this is a big fight for him. And, and you've been uh, very vocal saying that Connor will go down as one of the greatest of all time. Uh, why do you feel that way? Uh, he's one of the first guys to, to uh, carry belts in, in, in both weight classes. Um, you know, he, it, it, not only is he this, this megastar that people love, he's actually accomplished some real stuff and, and beat some real guys, uh, beat guys who at the time people didn't believe he would beat. You know, don't forget, when, when he was on his way up, a lot of people thought he was all hype. And uh, he proved everybody wrong. You know, you, you last told me Connor Poirier did 1.4 million pay-per-view buys. Is the pay-per-view trending above or below that figure right now? So let me tell, say this to you. First of all, most celebrities ever in 20 years of coming to a UFC event on Saturday night, number one. Number two, most pre-buys ever in the history of the company. And if you're, if you know that you're going to be home on Saturday night and you're going to watch this fight, buy it now. Don't wait because you're going to be sitting there trying to buy it with 2 million other people. And, uh, you know, that's when people start having problems with, with purchasing, um, lots of pre-buys because people are, 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 are that know they're going to be home Saturday and watch it are smart and are buying it early. You know, and you've never heard me say that before. I've never said, Oh, hurry up, buy the fight. You know, this, that all's bullshit. I, I, you know, I don't do that stuff. I'm just telling you every time when, when I, when we have these big fights, I'll be sitting ringside and, you know, these are these fights that do, you know, upwards of 2 million pay-per-view buys. And I start getting the, 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 the calls, people are having trouble ordering people are, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? So please, for your own sake, if you're going to be home Saturday night, you know, you're going to watch it, buy it now. I mean, it sounds like Connor I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to be sitting fucking ringside, so I'm not missing anything. I I'm mean, talking to you people. If you, if you want to see the fight, buy it early. It sounds like you and Conor McGregor are creating a great problem for ESPN to solve because obviously. Yeah, exactly. Believe me, we're all over ESPN to make sure that, you know, these guys are, these guys are ready for Saturday night because this is going to be a massive one. But it's clear that Conor is big business because the ESPN Plus numbers, they always grow every time. Uh, you know, Connor fights on a quarter by quarter basis. But let's quickly talk about one of your other big stars, your, your big pay-per-view star in John Jones, who's still on the sidelines waiting to make his heavyweight debut. How do you plan on repairing that relationship with him so he gets back into the cage once and for all? I don't think it's about repairing the relationship with him. John and I have gone round and round for years. It's not like, uh, listen, we've had our good times and we've had our bad times, John and I. And uh, I say it all the time. We put on fights every Saturday night. When John's ready to fight again, I'll have a Saturday night ready for him. You know, um, a John, John doesn't owe me anything or any apologies or we should sit down and, and, and kiss and make up or any of that. We're cool. Listen, we're, we're, we're both very opinionated. We're both very hard-headed with, with things. I don't dislike John Jones. I don't think John Jones dislikes me. Uh, you know, when he's ready, we're ready, and uh, we'll get it figured out. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've dealt with this with the likes of Nate Diaz, even Connor, and all the way dating back to Tito Ortiz. So, you know, there, there comes a, a fine line with dealing with these stars and uh, uh, giving, perhaps caving into their demands a little bit. Um, with 
with John Jones specifically, isn't that a promotional dream for you though, to really tell that heavyweight story and have that, have that arc play out as, cause you've built him to be the, the fighter that he is today. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I obviously, um, if you ever hear me talk about John Jones, I say that he's the goat. I say that he's the number one guy in the world. You know, I don't, I don't ever talk negatively about him or whatever. Um, it's all about, you know, I have a deal with John Jones. If John Jones wants to fight, we'll fight. And listen, we, you know, he wants this, he wants that. We're, we're talking to him and we're, we're, we're trying to do what we can to make him as happy as we can make him and, uh, and make this fight. And Dana, you talk about the deal. Obviously, you have contracts with all of your fighters. And there's been a lot of conversation recently over fighter pay in the UFC. And it's a sentiment shared by Jones as well. It hasn't been lately. It's been 20 years. <laughs> and guess what? It will for the next 20 years, too. Uh, what is your response to those who have been critical in the UFC's payout for its top stars? Yeah, I, I mean, the reality is anybody who's being critical outside of the fighters themselves don't know anything anyway. They don't, they don't actually know what these guys are making. And the fighters don't ever come out and tell you. You know, there's no gag order on any of these guys. These guys can come out at any time and uh, and tell you what they're making. I have no problem with that. But they don't do that. No, they do not. So it's sort of a catch-22. Fighter pay has continually gone up every year since we own the business. Um, you know, and obviously there's been tons more opportunities with the outfitting policy, the uh, some of the sponsors that we've brought in that spend tons of money with the fighters too. You know, there's a lot of opportunity here for fighters. And and, and listen, I, there's always there's never going to be a guy that's coming out and saying, yeah, they're paying me too much, they're overpaying me. And all of these guys that are champions share in the pay per view revenue. So that's it. Listen, if you don't like it. Go start your own MMA league and pay them whatever you want to pay them. This is mine, and this is the way we're doing it. You know what I mean? Well, make no mistake about it. Connor and Dustin will be handsomely paid once they square up Saturday night and the pay-per-view points are tallied, and I'm sure it'll be another massive event. Uh, Dana, best of luck to you and all the fighters, and uh, looking forward to seeing all of these uh, sold-out shows uh, moving forward. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.